Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our wonderful spring gnome right here. This is super fun and easy. Uh, well, fairly easy. Watercolor painting, well, at least watercolor is what I will be using today. If you don't have watercolor, you're welcome to use a watered down acrylic paint if you would like. So before we start, let's quickly go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need for today. And guys, remember, this is a video recording. So if you need to pause it, you can at any point give yourself enough time for any step. And then whenever you're ready, you can move, you can resume the video and move to next step. So go at your pace. Don't rush. So what we will need today, we're going to need a piece of paper. I'm using quite a standard watercolor paper. Nothing special about it. Literally purchased this at uh, Michael's. As you can see, it's Artist Loft. So again, it's super available everywhere. And the size I'm using is 9 by 12 inch. But you're welcome to use any size. It doesn't have to be that particular size. So let me grab... Oh, that's my last one. Yay! Then there's this back. That's exciting. All right, so I'm going to grab my paper. Next thing that I'm going to need is a pencil because we're actually going to start with a sketch. So make sure you have just a regular pencil of some kind and eraser would be beneficial to have as well just because they don't always turn out just right from the first line. Sometimes you have to redraw it a couple times and so on, which is perfectly normal. So it's always good to have an eraser on hand. Then we're going to need our paint. I'm going to be using my Koi palette watercolor paint, but you're welcome to use absolutely any watercolor that you have. Um, and of course, again, the watercolor tray or something to mix the colors on and prepare them. In my case, as you can see, it's quite a elaborate palette, but you can't really see all my colors here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing the actual color here on this palette. So you can see, and it just makes more sense than that. Um, if you guys don't have a palette as elaborate as mine and you have, let's say, more of a basic 6 or 12 color Crayola, that's no problem at all. You can still do this because all those um, not standard colors that uh, I have here, you can mix out of primary colors and I'll tell you how. And also every single color on this painting is replaceable. You can use absolutely, um, you can use different colors and still get a wonderful result. As long as you follow the same structure. So, yeah, any watercolor paint will do. And again, if you don't have watercolor, all you need is acrylic paint and you can just water it down really well to the consistency of pretty much dirty water and use that instead. So I'm gonna put this aside. Of course, we're going to need a water and we're going to need a paper towel or a usable fabric cloth, whichever you prefer and a couple different brushes. It's always good to have a few. I personally really like using three brushes. You don't always need three. Two brushes is usually plenty as well. So technically I could use my small one. This is actually, by the way, very important brush. You always need it for any of paintings that we teach, either acrylic or watercolor. You need a nice number zero or number one or number two, something really, really small, ideally zero. But again, any other small brush will work too. A uh, pointy brush. So, for details. And other than that, I'm going to be using one medium pointy and one large pointy. But if you just have two, one of, you know, one small and one a little bigger, that's plenty as well. So, and for watercolor, we generally recommend pointy brushes that are very soft. So, soft bristle pointy brushes with a really nice pointy tip. Do you see how all my brushes have a really nice pointy tip? So that's what we recommend, but use whatever you have, absolutely. So guys, how are we gonna do it? We're gonna start with a sketch. We're gonna sketch our gnome, and uh, we're gonna sketch it just using pencil, and then we're gonna move to our coloring. And certain areas here are gonna require more than one layer. I would say pretty much every single area, actually, will require more than one layer. And that's okay. So we're going to start layering the rest. But for now, just the sketch. And you can refer onto this image here on the screen, but I'll also be showing you the other image that I have every now and then. So 
So what I'm going to do first, the very first thing I like to do is I like to add vertical line right in the middle. And that's just for me to know where the middle of my gnome is. So I don't end up with a gnome that is leaning one way or, you know, leaning the other way or uh, with a gnome that's one side bigger than other. So he should be somewhat proportional. So I'm going to start with that line. So somewhere in the middle, I'm just going to put a straight line. Well, that almost, that's almost it. It doesn't look like a straight line, so let's straighten it up. I make this one light because we're going to need to erase it anyway. This is just for us for, you know, the straightening purposes. But later on, we're going to get rid of the sign. It's not going to stay here. So you don't need to make it, you know, thick and visible. You can just make it fine or hardly visible. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nose. I'm going to decide where the nose is going to be. I'm literally right in the middle. So wherever the middle of your paper is, that's a great place for a nose. So right in the middle, I'm going to add nose. Just a little oval, like a small potato. After that, we're going to add a hat. So hat is going to be, a, let's say, let's decide how wide it's going to be. I would say approximately the width of the hat should be about one third of the width of the entire of the entire paper. But again, this is super approximate. If it's bigger, so what? If it's smaller, so what? No big deal. So for somewhere in the middle of the notes here, we're gonna put one line to one side and then one line to another side. You see they're slightly curved. So pretty much just like that. And from here we're gonna bring the hat and you decide how high you want to go. You can go all the way up, you can go, you can have a short hat. I'm usually, I would prefer to go until maybe here to leave a bit of space on top, but not too much. And from here, we're just going to add, you know, a little wavy line because I'm not looking for a straight hat. I'm looking for a little bit of a wobbly hat. But it's up to you. You can make a straight hat too, and it's going to look great as well. So. That is completely up to you whether the hat is going to be straight or a little wobbly. All right, love this, great. So what I'm gonna do next is after I have my hat and I have my nose, I'm gonna add my beard. So I need to decide how big it's going to be and where it's going to be. So I would say it should be approximately the same size as hat, maybe a little bit less. So again, you decide how far you wanna go. Uh, you can go lower, you can stop shorter. The only thing that's, as you can see on this painting, the only thing that is a bit lower than um, a beard is the legs. So just leave enough space for the legs and maybe a touch for an uncovered background. So for me, I would say I would add my beard somewhere here. That seems like a good spot. And I'm just going to add like a rounded shape. Starting right at the edges of my hat. This is the base for my beard pretty much. And now I'm going to, so instead of having a straight line here, I'm going to make it more like a zigzaggy line. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, you can lighten it up first now that we know the shape. And then we can zigzag it up. I'm sorry, guys, my camera should readjust. Oh, yeah, it did. Perfect. Oh, 
All right, and now I can actually erase my middle line because there is no point for it anymore. So let's get rid of it. All right, awesome. So now I'm gonna add a little hands and a little legs. So hands are gonna go, I would say about halfway through my beard-ish. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little curve here and then I'm gonna add a little line here and then a little, something that looks like a mitten. And you see all together, like if this is the middle of my beard, kinda is somewhere there, around there. Not precisely in the middle, but somewhere around. And the same thing on the other side. One hand can be a little longer than the other. They don't have to be precisely the same length. But also, if they are, that's great too. It's a good thing. So again, a little curve and then a little mitten. And then legs. So legs are gonna start right under the arms here, and they're just gonna be like two little curves to the sides as well, like this. So two little curves, and then I'm gonna end up with the two little circles or ovals on the bottom, whatever you prefer. Um, the feet, they could be totally circular, or they could be a bit more horizontal like ovals. In my case, they are more horizontal like ovals. Done. So that's our gnome. Now we're going to move to florals. So we're going to start with a flower on our hat and then we're going to do all the background flowers. So let's get closer here. And I'm going to start, so let's look at this painting. So I'm going to start by positioning my middle. You can position it anywhere you want, but I think this is like a good section to position. So I'm going to position an oval. and then another smaller oval inside of it. And then I'm gonna add flower petals all around um, this oval. And let's look here for a second. Do you see how the flower petals that are closer to us are bigger and then they gradually get smaller, smaller, smaller as we go to the back. The same here, they're bigger and then they gradually get smaller, smaller, smaller. You can add one row first and then we're gonna add a second row in between. So, let's start. And you can have them as many as you want. It's totally up to you. And a good thing was start with a pencil because you can always redo them if they didn't turn out just the way you hoped they would from the first try. You can always just do them again. So, we can do this. And that's our first row. And I'm going to erase this right away. And then I'm going to add a second row. So second row again, the ones that are closer to us should be bigger, the ones that are further should be smaller. They're just sticking out in between. Great. And now I'm going to add a couple of leaves. So do you see there are two leaves here, there are two leaves here, and one leaf there. You can position your leaves in different spots, that's okay too. They don't have to be positioned exactly like that. So I'm going to position two of my leaves here. One leaf here, and two right here. And you see there are a couple of those that are sticking out, like little sticking out flowers. So we're gonna sketch them right away too. I'm gonna sketch, so I'm just usually start with direction lines. So I'm gonna add like the direction lines and then I'm gonna make it into the shape that I want. You see I'm just adding wiggly lines on each side. 
and make them wider closer to the bottom and pointy on the end to here and I'm going to add to right here maybe. And again, you can position them anywhere you want. Those are more like fillers. So wherever you place them, that's a good place to have them. And now we have our no with our uh, main flower. And now we're gonna move to our back flowers. So to the background here. And for our background, do you see I have some tulips here, I have some free flow flowers, and I have a big leaves. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with those big leaves. So they're going to go on the bottom. I'm going to start them right from the bottom of the leg. So I'm going to bring one here, one big leaf, and another one on the opposite side. Maybe I'll add one little one underneath here, possibly here. They don't have to be symmetrical, by the way. Um, then I'm going to add a couple tulips. So, pretty much shaped like that. So some tulips here, some tulips there, and on the other side as well. Tulips. More tulips. And now I'm going to add a stems to my tulips. A couple of those sticking out uh, free flow flowers. So one is going to go right here. Approximately one is going to go right here. We'll overlap the leaf. You can add them anywhere you want to. You don't even have to sketch them. You could technically just freehand them later, but if you prefer sketching, that's okay too. Some leaves. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add those long curved leaves at the back. So I'll add them here. Maybe one more. Why not, right? Maybe even a couple sticking out in between my tulips or behind my tulips. This is just a few there. And something similar on the side too. All right, and I would say that's pretty much it. We have our sketch. Nothing else really needs to be sketched here. The rest is just a painting work. So now that we have our sketch, we can move to painting. And you can put your pencils aside. By the way, guys, remember, again, this is a video recording. So if you need more time at any point, just pause it. Give yourself enough time. And then whenever you're ready, you can resume it and you can join me again. So there is no need for us. here at all. So, what I'm going to start with is I want to start with a first layer on this flower. Because that flower is going to take quite a few layers. I kind of want to start working there. And use whichever brush is appropriate. In my case, it's going to be either small or medium. I think both of those brushes will work just fine. But I think I personally want to use more of a medium brush here versus small, but really either one of them is going to work just fine. And I'm going to take my water, I'm going to dip my brush in the water, and I'm going to use my pink. So any color pink that you have, you can use whichever you prefer. For me personally, it's going to be this pink. That's the pink I'm going to go with. It's technically the only pink that I have. The other ones can be made into pink if I just water them down well, but that's the actual, the only actual pink that I have. So I'm going to take that white water down. So let me show you on my palette here what I'm doing.
that's my pink. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the gradient. So, I'm gonna take my pink. It does have some pigment, but it's not crazy dark. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add this pink to the first half of my flower petal. Then I'm gonna wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, I'm gonna spread it up. And do you see what happens? It creates a beautiful gradient with it being lighter on the top and darker on the bottom. So then I'm gonna refill my brush again and do this all over again. Color in the first half, then wash my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, color the rest, and so on. After that again, wash it, dab it on a paper towel and refill it. And we're gonna continue doing that until our flower is filled fully. Can do a couple petals at a time too if it's convenient. I wouldn't start with a couple petals right away. I would say start with one petal first and see how you like this technique before you move on to doing a couple petals at a time. But then if you feel like, yeah, I'm nailing it, I'm doing great, then you can totally do a few at a time. You don't have to do just one at a time. Alright, so that's our first layer. For the second layer of flower petals, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but keep in mind, the first layer needs to be somewhat dry before you can move to the second one, because otherwise they're just going to merge and you're not going to see the separation. So before you move to that one, make sure your sec um, the first one is dry enough and can handle it. So you see, in my case, it totally can. We'll just continue doing that. All right, then here's my flower. So this is just the base, but it's a really, really good base. I'm quite happy with that. And what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some yellow now. I'm just gonna take a little bit of yellow. Any saturation is good. You can take it super saturated or not saturated. I'm gonna take it quite saturated. And I'm gonna dab up this middle part in yellow. Great, we have a first layer, now let, let, let's let this dry. As that's drying, we can add a first layer. Since we still have pink on our palette, why wouldn't we add some pink onto um, our tulips? So I'm gonna take a super, super light version of it. You see, nice and light, like quite dirty water. And then I'm just gonna color them in. And you can leave some gaps. Do you see how I'm doing this in brush strokes? Yeah. 
So sometimes I would have a bit of gaps left in between. And that's good, you want that for the tulips. It's a good look for them. All right, and that is wonderful as well. Now we have a base for tulips, we have a base for this flower. Um, next thing I would like to move on to is going to be our greenery. So all those light greens, we're going to do them in a couple different colors. Again, it's going to be um, more like a base. So the colors that we're going to use, I'm going to use one super, super light green. So just take the lightest green that you already have and mix that with yellow. If you don't have any light green in your palette, you can grab a standard green, something like that, and just mix it with yellow with lots of yellow and it's going to bring you to the right color. But if you already have light green, great, you're still going to need to mix it with yellow by the way, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to take my light green, I'm mixing it with the yellow to see it creates even lighter green, and that's the color I'm hoping to use for my base. So I'm going to add a couple colors at the same time. I'm going to make my light green here to know that I have it and to have it on my palette here. But also I'm going to add slightly darker green. So this one should be like a just standard medium green. Like literally the most standard green you may find. So just something like that or like that, just a medium green. Nothing too dark. I think that's good. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a little bit of this one first. I'm going to color this one. And I'm going to color this one. And of course the little guy there too. Then I'm going to use this darker one. And I'm going to color here. Only half. And I'm going to color here. Only half. And I'm going to color here a little bit. And here. Now, before my paint dries, now this you should do right away. I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel. And I will spread those so they're like ombre, two colors. And then I'm going to go back to my lighter green, that one that I started with. And I'll finish this one up with lighter green. And I'll finish this one up with lighter green too. And you see, I'm going to help them blend a little bit with just clean, dry brush. So I wash off my brush, I dab it off on a paper towel, and I just blend them a little bit. And you see, they become ombre. This one is the only non ombre, but if you wanted to, you can just add. A smidge of darker green on this side. Then again, wash off your brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and then just ombre it. So smudge it in between. So it creates a nice blending. And now similarly to what we did that, once you have that, we're going to move to the bottom and we're going to do similar thing on the bottom here. So I need to make a bit more of my yellowy green. But I don't have much left of that. I've got the light light one of the start with. And I'm going to start with this left side. I'm going to color those in, all of them. And the big leaves too. And then on the big leaves, right away, I'm going to take my darker green and I'm going to add a bit of that. Just a couple of brush strokes. And you can wash off your brush after, dab it off on a paper towel, 
and help us spread a touch so it looks like again just a multicolored leaf versus one color and for the upper leaves we don't have to blend them we can just add you know a couple of brush strokes and if they're not blended you see I'm adding some separate brush strokes too that are not really attached but just adding some extra greenery fluff And then we'll move to the other side and we'll do pretty much the same thing. Now my green, my second green. Spread it a little. And just a couple of brush strokes to the top. All right, that's a good base. It's not done. We're still going to have um, other greens to add here, but this is a good start. We'll add a bit more around this mitten. like to add a base on my coat. So let's look at our coat for a second here. Our coat is it's made out of it's a combination of colors that I'm going to use pretty much at the same time. So one of them is dark blue slash teal so something like that right with some saturated blue but on a colder side. Another one is going to be an emerald green. This is my emerald green. Um, and maybe a purple or a darker blue. So I have purple here, darker blue here. So it's a combination of a few different colors. I would say try the colors that you have and see. So basically use some blues, some greens, and potentially some purples. Purples we can always add later too because we're going to be adding later on our beard here. So we can add it at the same time. It doesn't have to be done right away. Um, if you don't have emerald green, it's easy to make. So how do you make emerald green? is you take green that you have, let's say you only have standard green like that, and you mix it with your coldest blue. So for example, that and that will give you emerald green. And that's exactly what I'll be using. So some green and some blue. So let's put our colors on a palette again, because as you notice, I'm not going to my canvas, to my paper, before I add anything onto my palette. Everything goes onto my palette first. Okay, so this is my teal-ish color, or just like a nice cold blue. The shade that you prefer, whatever that may be, or generally any shade of blue that you like, it will do. Then I'll add my emerald cream. Put it here. We don't need that spot anymore. So we just utilize it. And you're going to use them quite uh, saturated. Yes, I'm still using a ton of water, but my pink is very saturated. It's not transparent, if you, as you can see, right? It has lots of pigment. And let's add some purple, or you can use warm blue. If you have warm blue, such as ultramarine blue, you're welcome to use that instead as well. And we can always add purple on the later layers. That's what I'm likely going to do. I'm just likely going to use my ultramarine and then I will add purple on a later layer. So, and just with a combination of those colors, we're going to fill this in. So 
So we'll add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Let them blend in, mix, merge, and so on. If you want to introduce any other colors in here, you absolutely can. Just make sure they're compatible. So in my case, it's blues, greens, and purples. But you can use any shades that you like. As you can see, they mix and blend and merge, and they create more shades, which is exactly what I was hoping for. This all, this one big blending, has to be done on a wet. You can't really add a couple colors and then take a break, because then it's not going to blend. It has to be all done almost in like one chunk. So that it blends properly. All right, and that's my hat. And now the exact same way I'm going to do um, the jacket or the coat, whatever, or pajamas, whatever he's wearing. That thing. And just like that, I have that color. And now while I'm still on emerald green, I'm gonna do a couple more things with this green. And that would be adding a bit of that onto our background leaves. So now you wanna use either a small brush or just the tip of your medium brush because you don't want it, um, you don't want those lines too harsh, but you do want them there. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of that, do you see? This is our last green color that we're going to be adding. Just a fine lines. A little bit on this side and a little bit on the other side too.
All right, that's great. Now we can move on to other sections. So we still have a lot of purple to go, but before I move into purple, purple for me is more like a finishing color here. There's still a couple of colors that I want to add base on that I don't have yet. So one of those colors is going to be nose. So we're going to do nose, we're going to do just a touch of base on our beard, and we're going to do base on our mittens and legs, and then we're going to start adding second color on certain areas. So for our nose, I would say you're going to start with something, um, so we're going to start with yellow, take a little bit of yellow, quite watered down, you see very, very lightly, and then add a little touch of pink to it, and that's the base for your nose. And then after that, you're going to add more pink into it. And with this, you're going to go around on the inside of the nose, but closer to the edge, and you're going to let it spread towards the middle. And then I'm going to add a bit more yellow again and water it down to bring it to my original color. And with this, I'm just going to add a couple of flicks from the nose out towards the beard. Just if you understand how light my paint is, you want the paint light here. We're not trying to color in the beard. That's not the goal here. Now for our mittens, we're actually going to start with pink again. So I'm just going to grab my pink. And it's up to you how saturated. I would say medium light is good. And I'm going to color them in fully. And then right away, I'm going to take a little bit of orange or, if you, or yellow if you prefer that. Either orange or yellow. Every color um, palette has orange or yellow. So whatever orange or yellow you have, and I'm just going to blend it in right away while it's still wet. You see just a little bit, not on the entire thing. Just choose a spot and add it in there. And that's pretty much it for that layer. Or those sections. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to a slightly more saturated pink. So to the same pink I used earlier, I'm just going to add a bit more pigment and I'm going to add second layer, second layer on my tulips. So this time, just a couple more um, fine lines. See, I'm going to get closer here so you guys can see it better. And again, best brush to use is probably small, but I personally really like using the top edge of my medium brush for this. So you see I'm adding more of our smaller lines. And you can use red or orange too, but so you can use any compatible color here. It doesn't have to be just pink. If you prefer to maybe use uh, like red or a different shade um, of anything red-ish, pink-ish compatible, like orange, coral, you absolutely can, and it will still look wonderful. So that's our second layer on that. And then I'm going to go second layer on my flower here. And again, it's probably the most ideal to use your small brush for this. And we're going to add second layer in more saturated pink as well. And this time, don't use that much water. You still should have a decent amount of water, but you don't need that much water. And what are we going to do? We're just going to add flicks from the inside out like this on every single flower petal. Notice I'm going a little bit further closer to the edge of my flower petals. So that's my layer number one. And I'm going to do the same thing on the layer number two. I might even make it more saturated just to make it a little more visible. Oh, 
All right. And while I'm still on pink, I will do one more thing. And that would be adding a little bit of pink on our um, beard. Just not a lot though, so I'm gonna water it down with really well to make it nice and very light. And I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna flick some from the inside out here, just a little. You see it's very light. That's important for our beard is that it stays nice and light. We don't wanna turn it into dark. And then I'm gonna flick some from the edges in. So like this. So I go across the edge and then from the edge in, I flick some. All right, and here is the base for our beard. Now, the other color that I would like to add onto our beard that we don't have just yet is gray. So what I'm gonna do is, again, using the medium or small brush, I'm gonna go with a small one. I'm gonna take some quite watered down black. So what are we down into a nice shade of gray? Should be light gray as well, shouldn't be too dark. And we're gonna do the same thing we just did with our pink. So we're gonna start, and you can start at the edge or you can start in the middle. I'm just gonna add a bit of surrounding here actually. And then a couple of flicks. Make sure it's light as well. You don't wanna be using dark gray here. See, and then the same from the edge. You go across the edge, all around your beard, and then you flip from there. All right, and that is done. Um, what else we should, what should we move on to next? I think we can move on to our background next because we don't have any background just yet. So I think it's a good time to start adding that. And for our background, we're gonna use the biggest brush that you have. For me, it's this brush. We're gonna use ton of water and we're gonna use a couple different colors. We're gonna use some yellow and we're gonna use some pink, and that's pretty much it. And again, you can use any shade of red or pink that you prefer. There's no particular one that you have to use. Um, so I'm gonna start with my warm yellow. I'm gonna water it down really well. So it's nice and liquid, but still quite saturated. And then I'm gonna add a good um, pile or, you know, puddle of color right here. And right here, and you can go right over your flower. Don't you don't have to avoid that. This color is very light, so it should be, you know, it shouldn't affect it in, in, in any negative way. And then I'm gonna take some sort of pink or watered down red. Maybe I would even water it down in the same spot. I will add it over um, my yellow. Why not, right? Let's give it different shades, like a peachy shade. And then I'll take straight pink. Again, you know not put on the same spot. The more shades of all those pinkish, peachy colors you have at the back, the better. Avoid your greenery if you can, because they're not compatible colors. You want your greenery to stand out. You just loosely cover all color around them. You don't have to, you know, add too much at this point. You can just add a couple dabs. And that is more than enough. That is plenty. Mm -hmm. 
and then I will add a couple splatters. So for splatters, you want to use slightly more saturated paint. It doesn't have to be crazy saturated, but just a little more saturated. And again, something on this spectrum of peach and pink and red. Take it super, super watered down as well. I mean, very liquid. It doesn't have to be watered down color-wise. It just has to be watered down consistency-wise. And we'll just add a bit of it. And some of it that lands on a wet spot will um, merge into background right away. Some of it that lands on the dry spots will stay more of a circular. And both is great. All of it is good. All right, now I need to wait for all that to dry up before I can continue working there. And again, guys, don't forget to take breaks when needed, um, wherever that may be. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a bit of blue underneath here. You can use medium brush for that, and any blue will work, but I want to use ultramarine blue. So ultramarine blue is blue. If you have a variety of colors in your palette, it's going to be blue always closest to your purple. So the blue next to your purple is going to be ultramarine blue, but generally it's just warmer blue. If you don't have that one, what you could do, just take blue that you have, if you only have one blue, and add a little bit of purple to it, and it will bring you right to the right color. So with this ultramarine blue, I'm kind of going to darken up this bottom part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it around here. and then dab it into background in a very, very messy way. You can see just darkening up the section. And kind of a very abstract merging it into your background. Done, done, and done. And now, mostly, we just have one color left. We may have a bit more than that, but um, we mostly just have purple. So that's what we're going to start working on. And I'm going to put my purple right here because, again, pink and purple are compatible colors, so I don't need a new tones, uh, any, I don't need a new spot for it. I can just, you know, edit over something. You can edit over blue or over pink. And any purple will do, whichever purple you have. In my case, my palette only has one, so that's the one. Oops. All right, so here's my purple. And while that's drying, it can't really work there, but it can work on my beard. So that's what I'm gonna do using either a small brush or the very tip of your medium brush. In my case, I'm going to go with the tip of my medium brush, but small brush is definitely a safer choice. I'm going to start by adding a little bit of it. So pretty much what I did with the black, I would say just less of it. I'm not going to be adding as much of it. But you see it darkens up the top and it darkens up the bottom. And now, with the same purple, I'm going to work on this jacket. So let's get closer here. Actually, I might add a bit more purple right here, just to darken it up a little more. I 
All right, so for the jacket, I'm gonna darken it up around the jacket too. So right here, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple around the mitt. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. And on the leg here, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. This is closer to the beard too, just to darken up that spot. Here underneath, here underneath. Just a little bit on the background. Do you remember how we dabbed some ultramarine blue? So I'm actually going to dab some purple like that too, just a little bit. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Oops. Hooray, our body is done. But what else we can do is we can add now this purple flowers on the sides. So again, I'm just gonna grab my nicely saturated purple and I'm gonna dab them up. So all the sections that I outlined with my pencil, I'm just gonna dab it in, dab them on the inside. That's one. There's my second one here. And if you want to, you can add a couple little uh, brush strokes that are separated, you know, just a couple little dots with the tip of your brush so they don't look crazy large, but you know, just a couple ones that are around versus attached. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Awesome. that's our purple flowers. If you want to, you can even add another layer on your tulips, not in purple, in some sort of red or pink. Mm -hmm. Just to darken them up, but you don't have to. This is more than enough of layers. No, guys, now I'm looking at it, and I kind of want to darken up my around the nose section, because I feel like it's a little too light. So I'm gonna make it again. You start with a touch of yellow. Where's my palette here? Touch of yellow, then I'm gonna add a touch of pink or red. And with that, I'm gonna go a bit closer to the outline of the nose. Oh yeah, I like that more. If you want to, you can blend it towards the middle. Or you can leave it like that if you wanna blend it how you would do it is you would wash off your brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and then with a clean, slightly wet brush, you're gonna go over the sections where you added paint, and just add some water on the edge so it kind of blends them. Just the middle, I like that. All right, that looks good to me. And now with my purple, Again, I'm going to add those two sections there. I'm going to start with this one.
And here, I kind of want to do a mixture of purple and pink, just so it's a little more vibrant. So I'm going to start with my purple. I'll do like one side. I'll dab up one side with purple. And you can totally overlap your background with that. And then I'm going to take saturated pink. And the other side, I kind of want to dab up with pink so it has a bit more brightness, I would say, against the background here. Nice. And then back to my purple. And we're going to dab up mm -hmm. the middle part a little bit. And ideally, again, you want to do this with a small brush, but medium small will also work for any brush that has a nice pointy tip. And then just a little in the middle of this yellow. Awesome. Now, I'm going to switch my brush actually to a small one for this. And I'm going to use a bit more purple again because it's that time. It's time for everything purple. So now I'm going to add just a little flips from the inside out following the outlines of my flower petals just to separate them a little bit. They're kind of almost all blended into one. So just a little bit of separation would be really nice. And then we're going to add a final purple detail, which is going to be, do you remember how we added the outline to the body of our gnome? So we're going to add the same in purple to the top, to the hat basically. So again, I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to grab some quite saturated purple. And what I'm going to do, let me show you, is I'm going to add this purple to the edge. Sometimes I'll add it a little bit behind um, like as a shadow from our flower too. And then right away, I'm not adding it everywhere, just added this mix, um, a piece, right? Then I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off with a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, I'm gonna smudge it before it dries, because otherwise it's just gonna dry and I'm not gonna be able to smudge it. So you see, now I have a darker purple outline. So now I'm gonna refill my brush, and I'll do the same in another section. Then again, I'll wash my brush, dab it off my paper towel, and I'll smudge it towards the middle with a clean wet brush. And you see what it creates is just a darker, more purple edge to our hat. Done, done, and done. And as an optional, what you could do, just to add a bit more darkness in certain areas, you can grab your ultramarine blue, because ultramarine usually is quite a dark blue, or even black, or something very dark but compatible. Darker purple, darker blue, black. I'm going to grab ultramarine. And you can add on your purple section, so for example, right here, right here, you can add just a couple dabs. You don't want to color the entire thing. You just want to, you know, Add something else. Right here, maybe a little, a couple dabs. Just to make it a little more interesting. And again, it's not necessary. This is super optional. But it does add certain kind of character here. And guys, after that, that is pretty much it. We are officially done. Don't forget to sign it because you did all this beautiful work. So you need to sign it. Find a really good spot. You can sign it with any color. You can put your name, your initials, or anything else that you would like. Now, guys, if you would like to share your results with us, please do. We absolutely love seeing how they turn out. This is something we always look forward to. 
and there is a group. We have a Facebook group. Let me find, um, I should have a paper that actually says the name of the group on it. So you don't have to browse the internet around for it. So oh, here it is. We have a group on Facebook that is called Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. It is a group, basically peer support group, where uh, we encourage everyone to post their results, to post uh, how things turned out, and just to get encouragement in, and feedback from us, but also from other people on this journey of discovering watercolor painting and just learning and improving your skills. So if you would like to share your results, please do that. Take a photo and post them in this group. We would love to see them. If not, that's okay, no pressure, not pressuring you, only if you're comfortable with it. And guys, if you had fun and you would like to say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. You can do that through PayPal. There is a link in the description of this video that you can find. Um, so yeah, just look at through the description. There is a link to uh, PayPal for Vera and you can just use that. So thank you in advance. I appreciate I appreciate that. I appreciate you taking the time. I hope you enjoyed this. If this was your first time painting with us and you had fun, feel free to subscribe. We do have a lot more videos coming up. We pretty much host events here at least once a week. Um, sometimes it's live events, sometimes it's, it's video releases just like this one. So feel free to take a look what's coming up. Because um, again, we post them ahead of time at about month one month ahead of time so you always know what's coming in next month but we also have lots and lots of already recorded classes for watercolor for acrylic for uh, pencil drawings so feel free to take a look and again guys thanks for joining me bye everyone